Ocal PVC coated conduit system is a highly effective solution for helping protect and prolong the life expectancy of electrical systems in corrosive environments. It's important to remember that in order to maintain the integrity of the coating, specialized installation methods and tools must be used. When coatings are damaged, the end result can be premature corrosion that can severely compromise the electrical system. In this video, we'll give you an overview of the correct equipment, techniques and methods required to maintain the integrity of these products during installation. This video is intended for demonstration purposes only. All work should be performed in compliance with applicable laws, rules, policies and regulations. Ocal PVC coated conduit, fittings and accessories are designed and manufactured at ABB's Jonesboro, Arkansas facility. With its strategic location in the South Central US, this facility is ideally located to serve the North and South American markets. Correct clamping must take place before threading Ocal PVC coated conduit using handheld threaders. When performed properly, yoke style and chain style clamping are two methods that will help ensure that Ocal PVC coated conduit will not be damaged. When you use a yoke style vise, you should replace both the upper and lower jaw inserts with specially designed Ocal jaw vise adapters. These adapters provide greater clamping force and prevent the pipe from spinning during the threading process. If a chain style vise is used, the chain and the lower jaw will tear the PVC coating during threading. To prevent damaging the coating, installers fabricate shells from standard rigid steel conduit that fit over the PVC coated conduit, protecting the chain from coming into direct contact with the PVC coating. To make shells, use a piece of rigid conduit 6 to 8 inches in length and one size larger than the PVC coated conduit. Then, remove a 1 inch piece lengthwise from the cut conduit section. Cut the section lengthwise in half, giving you two shells. Next, grind and brush the edges of the shells smooth. Lastly, score the inside of the shells with a bandsaw. To clamp with a chain, place a shell on top of the lower jaws, then rest the conduit on top of the bottom shell. Place the second shell on top of the conduit. Now you're ready to clamp the chain to secure the conduit. Operations such as threading and cutting can now be carried out, providing protection to the PVC coating. Cutting can be performed by using a bandsaw or roller style cutter. Bandsaw cutting will require the additional step of pencil cutting the coating to prep the PVC conduit for handheld threading. With roller cutting, no additional removal of PVC coating is necessary. A bandsaw is often the preferred method to cut conduit. With a bandsaw, the cut will leave the PVC coating flush with the end of the conduit. When PVC material is left flush at the end of the conduit, the threading process cannot begin because the threader die teeth are unable to bite into the steel. To prepare the conduit for threading, approximately one quarter inch of the PVC coating must be removed. Using a knife, Whittle in a pencil sharpening style, cutting one quarter inch of the coating from the conduit. A wire brush may also be used to remove PVC coating. Although most personnel in the field prefer a bandsaw cutter, a roller style cutter is the recommended tool for cutting Ocal PVC coated conduit. A roller style cutter cuts the edge of the conduit at a bevel and removes one quarter inch of the coating at the same time. So no additional removal of PVC coating is necessary to prepare for threading. 
The choice of threading method is determined by the quantity of Ocal PVC coated conduit to be installed. For low volume or maintenance and smaller size conduit, the simplest method is handheld threading. A portable geared threader can be used for larger diameter conduit. For high volume quantities, a stationary power threader is recommended. PVC coated conduit has a larger outside diameter than uncoated conduit. Standard die heads will not clear the additional thickness. Therefore, handheld threading devices require special or modified die heads for PVC coated conduit. If special die heads are not available, modified die heads suitable for PVC coated conduit can be used. Never strip the PVC coating to use a standard die head. Doing so will result in exposed steel, which will compromise the protection of the conduit system. Standard die heads can be modified as well. If you have a standard die head machine, first remove the cover plate and the four die teeth. Next, have the machinist remove 100 thousandths of an inch from the throat and collar diameter of the die head. Then reinstall the dies and cover. Since the handheld threaders use an enclosed die head, it can become clogged with PVC and metal shavings. Clogged metal shavings may cause damage to the newly cut threads during the threading process. In order to avoid this, scoring of the PVC coating must take place prior to threading. First, use a conduit thread cap to determine the proper length you need to score from the conduit end. Next, use a knife and score the conduit lengthwise from the point where the threads will end to where they begin. Now it's time to thread the conduit. Due to the lengthwise scores, the PVC and the metal shavings are able to evacuate from the die head with a threading oil. Be sure to use a quality threading oil during this process. Once the threading is complete, ream the conduit with approved reamers. Spiral and straight style reamers are both acceptable. Next, clean the threads with a quality degreaser. Coat the threads with Thomas & Betts Copper Shield Compound. Ocal Blue Urethane Thread Compound can also be used as a coating. Geared threaders will thread 2.5 through 6 inch PVC coated conduit. However, geared threaders are typically only used for 5 and 6 inch conduit. Since the geared threader has an open style die head design, Scoring is not required to prep the conduit for threading. The geared threader requires a clamp screw to secure the conduit. The clamp screw will penetrate the PVC coating. Make sure the clamp screw is tight to prevent slippage around the conduit which may tear the coating. Geared threaders can be driven by handheld ratchet threaders. Refer to the equipment manuals for proper setup and operation instructions. After the geared threading process is complete, be sure to touch up the penetrated area with Ocal Exterior Patching Compound. When threading PVC coated conduit with stationary power threaders, special jaw inserts may be required for PVC coated conduit in order to prevent slipping. The standard jaw inserts with these units are intended to secure uncoated rigid conduit but may damage the coating on PVC coated conduit. The blade style jaw inserts are intended to dig down to the steel, which means that following the threading, the coating will need to be patched. Special jaw inserts are also required for larger stationary threaders that thread up to 4 inch conduit. These inserts have a wider surface area designed to grip the PVC coating without damage, so no patching is necessary following the threading procedure. If blade style inserts and wider jaw inserts are unavailable, shell style clamps can be placed between standard jaw inserts and PVC coated conduits to prevent slipping and damage. Replacing the jaw inserts can be achieved by using a flat head screwdriver. In this threading demonstration, we'll be using a stationary power threader set up for NPT threading. This machine uses a hand wheel to tighten the three jaws to the conduit. 
Always make sure the thread cutting oil is clean and that you're using the type of grade recommended by the manufacturer. Most stationary threading machines use a roller style cutter and will remove a quarter inch of the PVC coating. Therefore, there is no need to pencil cut before threading. In addition, these machines use open style die heads, so it is not necessary to score the PVC coating. The PVC cuttings and steel shavings will freely fall out of the die head. Ream the conduit using the onboard reamer. Next, clean and coat the newly machined threads as described earlier. The last step is to repair the slits in the coating caused by the blade style inserts. There will be three contact points that will require patching. The specifics of different repair methods will be discussed later in this video. For bending PVC coated conduit, standard machines can be used. Special shoes and rollers must be used for OCAL conduit bending using electric and hydraulic machines. A standard hand bender can be used for saddles, offsets, and conventional bending. As you can see, PVC coated conduit fits perfectly inside a hand bending shoe. No upsizing or machining of a standard hand bender is required for OCAL PVC coated conduit. Most electric benders will bend up to 2 inch conduit. Some manufacturers offer shoes and roller assemblies ready for use with PVC coated conduit. Alternatively, you can use conventional shoes and rollers but they must be machined to remove 60 thousandths of an inch. Never use any type of lubricant on the shoes. Lubricant can cause slipping of the conduit while bending, which can result in kinking of the conduit. Always use rubbing alcohol to clean the conduit, shoes and rollers prior to bending to remove any contaminants that may cause slipping and damage. Be sure to compensate for spring back since PVC coated conduit often requires the setting to be off as much as 5 degrees. Once bending is complete following these steps, there should be no damage to the conduit and PVC coating. Hydraulic bending is the preferred style of bending for larger sizes of conduit, 2.5 inches and above. The shoe assembly should be of the design for PVC coated conduit. Alternatively, you can use a conventional shoe and have the internal cavity machined out by 60 thousandths of an inch to accommodate the extra thickness of the PVC coating. The roller wheel or slide bar do not need to be machined to accommodate PVC coated conduit. As always with bending, never use lubricants and be sure to clean the conduit shoes roller wheel or slide bar with rubbing alcohol prior to bending some hydraulic benders have trouble with larger sizes of pvc coated conduit slipping vertically out of the shoe during the bending process and this can cause kinking if slipping occurs a simple method of prevention is to place pieces of cardboard along the sides of the conduit within the shoe 5 and 6 inch conduit must be bent in the factory. OCAL PVC coated conduit should always be damage free. Any compromise to the PVC coating can lead to corrosion, which places personnel and the electrical system at risk. OCAL offers two PVC patching compounds to repair minor damage of PVC coating. To repair areas larger than 1 inch in width, use a quality vinyl or PVC tape. OCAL Air Cure Patch Compound is commonly used in a variety of environments, especially where heat cure patching is not an option. To prepare for patching, use a wire brush to remove any rough or loose edges surrounding the damaged area. Next, Using the integrated cap brush, 
apply a generous amount of Ocal Liquid Air Cure patching compound to the area. The compound should overlap the surrounding PVC since the compound only adheres to PVC. Make sure that the patched area is level with the original factory coating, which is a nominal 0.04 inch. This may require two or more applications. Allow each coat of the compound to cure up to 24 hours. Ocal Heat Cure Patch Compound offers a thicker consistency at higher ambient temperatures than standard air cure compounds, helping provide better coverage and a more effective patch in warm weather applications. Using a standard chip brush, apply heat cure patching compound in the same manner as air cure patching compound. The compound should overlap the surrounding PVC, since the compound only adheres to PVC. To dry, use a common heat shrink gun. The compound should cure in approximately two minutes, resulting in a dull finish. As mentioned earlier, be sure to build the patched area to the level of original factory coating with as many coated layers as necessary, allowing each coat to dry thoroughly. If patching is not an option, you can repair a large area of exposed metal greater than one inch wide by using vinyl or PVC tape. This type of repair should be used as a temporary solution until the compromised section can be replaced. First, remove any loose PVC material and smooth rough PVC edges surrounding the damaged area. Wrap the conduit with the tape to at least 0.04 inch thickness, overlapping one half the width of the tape as well as the surrounding PVC coating. Completely cover the taped area with Ocal PVC spray to assist with sealing the taped area, as well as aesthetically color matching the factory PVC coating. When working with Ocal PVC coated conduit, special wrenches are required to protect the coating. A J wrench and a non-absorbent strap wrench are two tools recommended for use when tightening PVC coated conduit. Conventional slip joint pliers will cause severe damage to PVC coating. Ocal offers J wrenches that are of a slip joint design with extra wide jaws that protect the PVC coating while gripping. A strap wrench can also be used to tighten PVC coated conduit. Be sure to use a strap wrench with a non-absorbent strap, normally designated by its yellow color. Avoid using conventional strap wrenches with a white strap, as they will absorb oil over time and will slip when used with PVC coated conduit. This concludes the Ocal installer training video. We hope that this video has provided you with an overview of the specialized installation methods and tools that ensure the integrity of your PVC coated conduit installation over its expected lifespan. To learn more about Ocal products and technical specifications, scan this QR code.